Welcome to So Far Apart Together, a series of interviews with youth leaders and churchgoers where we look at how life might have changed during lockdown. I've also asked them in advance if they have anything they'd like to share with the youth of Bethel and the wider church, something to encourage, embolden, maybe even challenge. Today, joining me on the sofa, apart but together, with Bethany Baker. Hi, Bethany. Hi. You all right? No, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm speaking inside an empty church and it's echoing back <laughs> at me, so it's really strange. Where are you at the moment? I'm actually in Devon, so I've been isolating with my boyfriend here. Um, so, yeah, just chilling here. Awesome. Okay. So, what have you been up to during lockdown? I'm trying to get fit. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been doing well. I've been doing a bit of cycling, um, a bit of Joe Wicks workouts in the morning. Um, oh yeah, I love the Joe Wicks. Yeah, a lot of walking. Um, I've also taken up a few online courses as well. So I've been trying to do British Sign Language. I've been doing a bit of the basics of that, um, and then also teaching English as a second language. So I've been doing that course as well. So hopefully at the end I'll get some certificates. <laughs> oh wow, fantastic! So using the sign the time constructively then, rather than. <laughs> Yeah, rather yeah. than just sitting around. Well, that'd be, that's really cool about sign language as well. It's such a, an underappreciated way of communicating with people and it really does open up a, a whole world uh, to some people. So that's that's fantastic. That's going to be great. And you, obviously something that you can employ in your work that you do as well. Yeah, so school's going back on the 29th. So I'm really excited about that. So looking forward to it. <laughs> Can't wait to go back to school. <laughs> Yay, school's back. I never <laughs> thought everybody would be cheering for school to be coming back. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, um, I asked you to uh, prepare a little bit of something that has come to you during this time or, or something yeah. that you've learned in your life that you want to share with the youth to uh, maybe encourage them or just give them a different perspective, a different bit of wisdom. Um, mm -hmm. what, what is it you want to share? Yeah, so the great thing about lockdown is that I've actually been able to have some time to read. So I've been doing a lot of reading at the minute. So I've actually been reading this book um, by John Mark Comer. Um, it's called The um, Elimination or the, Ruth, the Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. Um, so I was actually given this book by um, Joanna. Um, so she sent it to me through the post. And it's just been so great. Um, and I think one thing that lockdown has really taught me is the importance of slowing down. So I think one thing that I've definitely done is put busyness um, and hurry on a kind of pedestal um, and just thought that if I'm not busy, if I'm not rushing around everywhere, um, then I'm kind of being lazy or I'm wasting my time um, or just not using my time effectively. Um, but this book kind of just teaches us that um, hurry is actually quite bad. Um, so if you're in a hurry, if you're rushing around, you're unable to be um, loving, peaceful and joyful. Um, and that's kind of reflect, like made me reflect on uh, my time in work and my time in school because um, they're such busy environments. You know, we've got too much homework or so many after school activities. Or for me, in work, you know, working with kids is very busy. You've got like one climbing up a bookcase and then you've got one hitting another kid with a Lego brick or whatever it is. It's just really chaotic and busy. Um, it's made me reflect, reflect, especially on kind of my Tuesdays. So um, I start work doing breakfast club and then I go into the main day of school and then I also help out an after school club which finishes around six half six then I go on to like B zone and those days are just so crazy busy um and even though I love all those things um actually they're not always like what's best for us um so yeah you're just unable to be loving peaceful and joyful um so for example, loving, um, when we're rushing around, when we're busy, we're not always kind with our words. It makes me think of like when I get back on those Tuesdays and my mum goes, oh, how is your day back? And I'm like, oh, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry. I just want to go to bed. Um, and then peaceful. Often when we're, we're busy, we're really stressed out um, and we're worked up uh, if we're in a rush and our mind can often feel really um, crazy. And then joy as well. We're not present in those happy moments. So I think about the little boy that I work with. Um, and he might have just achieved something amazing, but because I've got 30 kids tapping my, me on my back going, Miss Baker, Miss Baker, I don't really celebrate those little moments with him, um, which is so gutting. Um, and then it just kind of goes on then to talk about how um, Jesus is rarely in a hurry. He's not kind of on his phone, half texting, half replying to his disciples' questions, like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, he didn't say, oh, sorry, you know what? I'd love to heal you right now, but I've actually got a really important meeting to go to, or I've got a TED talk to do in Jerusalem. 
Um, he, was, <laughs> he was present in all these situations and he doesn't let anything or anyone kind of cause him to be in a rush. Um, he's constantly interrupted, um, but he never gets annoyed and agitated. And I just think that's so incredible because like I often hear parents talk about when they're in a rush trying to get their kids out the door and things are just really stressful. Um, but it's also like this book kind of says about how his schedule is busy. He gets a lot done in his day, but he never comes across as hurried or dashing around or in a rush. He's often very chilled out, very relaxed. Um, so yeah, I was just going to read a little bit from this book just to finish. Oh, please do, yeah. Um, so it just says, more than once we read stories about Jesus sleeping in um, and his disciples having to wake him up. I like this, Jesus. Uh, I like this Jesus and want to follow him. Every chance we got, he would enjoy a nice long meal with his friends over a bottle of wine, creating space for an in-depth conversation about the highs and lows of life. He would practice Sabbath on a weekly basis, an entire day set aside for nothing but rest and worship every single week. We could go on, but my point is simple. He put on, put on display an unhurried life where space for God and love for people were the top priorities. And because he said yes to the father and his kingdom, he constantly said no to countless other invitations. And I just thought that was so amazing. Um, and then kind of the key verse that it talks about in this book um, comes from Matthew 11, uh, verses 20 to 30. And it says, come to me, all of who, you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Um, so yeah that was kind of just what I've been kind of thinking about reflecting on over this lockdown um, and I think a lot of people have been um, with a slower pace of life and things so yeah I thought I'd just share that. <laughs> That's fantastic I love that yeah. I love that idea that, that we can view Jesus in a different way like because mm -hmm. a lot of us they uh, like take the whole idea that we've got to emulate Jesus as oh we have to be like the, the spiritual side of him yeah. and, and follow the rules and things like that. Yeah. But actually there's this other side of Jesus that mm -hmm. he's totally chill with yeah. everything. Like yeah. his, his faith is so close to his father's that he's okay. And like you said, he sleeps in the yeah. boat, the storm is raging outside. He's chilling, yeah. you know, <laughs> and when he needs to, he takes time away. He, mm -hmm. he knows the rhythm of his body. He knows he needs sleep. He knows he needs food with friends. He knows he needs time with the father as well. That, and yeah, that's an inc incredibly, um, incredible, incredible way of emulating an incredible way of living your life, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. So I'm only halfway through the book, so I can't wait to see what else it's going to teach me. But yeah, it'll be great. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. It's definitely given me a thirst for that book. And actually, I think you're like the third person who I know who's reading it. So um, and I think there's definitely something going on here that we need to have a look at and uh, maybe do a little bit of a study over. Um, who knows? Uh, I'll have a look at the book myself and see what we can do about that. But that's fantastic. Yeah, it's great. So it's, so it's really, really ended up a, a, a nice little way of learning during lockdown is obviously you've had a bit more time to read. Yeah. And, not, and actually slowing down the pace of life has yeah. given you the opportunity to look at how hurried I think part of the issue that we're heading into at the moment as things come back isn't it that um it's wondering what part of life do you want to get back like like you've got that opportunity now to reflect and go right which bits of my life mm. of the hurry of the bustle of the busyness mm. um which bits didn't I like and yeah. which bits am I, have I happily lived without over the last few weeks? So, yeah, uh, yeah definitely an opportunity to review your life and, and to have a look and see what's going on. Yeah, but, definitely. Yeah, thank you very much for that, Bethany. That's brilliant. <laughs> no problem. Cool. So you're starting back work on the 29th, is that right? Yeah, hopefully, yeah. Right. <laughs> hopefully, well, well yeah. Um, we'll be praying for you and I hope it goes all well and coming back to Cardiff and everything and you know you get to see your mum and dad as well then um, <laughs> but thank you so much for joining me on the sofa this morning uh, it's been great to have you Bethany and great to hear uh, your encouragement as well thank you great to see you too <laughs> <laughs> bye 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 Thank you so much for joining me on the sofa for this wonderful interview. Um, if you want to see any more interviews, uh, I'm sure they'll be available in the boxes next to me. 
Um, please keep tuning in. And if you want to be interviewed yourself, please give us a, a shout on the email in the description below. Bye-bye.